Uh, in this presentation, I will be talking about the part, multiple path particle dosimetry model, or known as MPPD. MPPD is a, a tool, is a, is a computational tool designed to predict the uh, in the position and dose of inhaled materials in the respiratory tract of humans and several species. So I'll start with a little introduction. Why do we need a computational tool to inform dose response uh, model and talk risk assessment? I mean, first of all, uh, the computational dose modeling complements in vitro and inhalation studies. Uh, when you do an experiment, all you get is the results, but you don't really gain, gain any insight into it. By being able to model, you can model the mechanisms, the physiology, and gain better understanding of the processes. And it also helps with the product design. The second thing is that the modeling can be faster, cheaper, and can fill gaps, which is not, again, which are not addressed by inhalation studies. In, in experiments are expensive and take long time. So modeling can be a great tool in that respect, at least for STAR, give you some preliminary data information. And finally, dosimetry models can be used for interspecies dose extrapolation. You do your studies in animals when you cannot do, do studies in humans. So basically, you develop models in humans, in animals, you are able to extrapolate. So, so what are the objectives in dosimetry modeling? Uh, the objective is to develop mechanistic models based on the physical and physiological parameters that govern trans transport within the respiratory tract. And with this tool, we should be able to predict the total deposition in the lung, regional, low bore, and local deposition. There are three approaches to uh, develop the dosimetry model. First approach is very detailed modeling. Here you have exact data on exact geometry, so you can construct the geometry. Is it from imagery or other information or, or, or measurements? And then you develop your model, three-dimensional model in all details, basically capture all the physics and physiology. And then you assign your boundary conditions, and so initial conditions, so far and on. Well, this is a great tool, except that uh, in the long, with having so many airways and so complex physiology, it's practically impossible to do that for the entire lung. You can only do it for the upper airways at best. Lower airways, we don't really know much about the physiology, how the lung ventilation is, and so forth. So, so an alternative would be to develop a whole lung dosimetry model, which, is a, which has been the main tool in toxicology. And MPPD is an example of that. You develop a dosimetry model on the entire respiratory tract by making simplified assumptions regarding the geometry, lung ventilation, and particle transport. So uh, the two are complement each other, actually. So ideally, it's a new approach is to combine the two. Basically, use, you have a model which are, are that, that are to feed into each other, the one and two. You basically uh, have the models with the site specific modeling for the upper airways and the MPPD for the lower airways. Uh, due to interest of time, I cannot explain more details, but there's a lot there that we can talk about. So what is the MPD, MPPD's engine? So it models the entire uh, breathing process, of inhaling and depositing and exhaling. So it, it predicts the position for one respiratory uh, cycle. So it's your star with a given aerosol size distribution. When it's inhaled, a fraction of it is, uh, and it enters the upper respiratory tract. Not all enter because of the inertia that these particles carry with themselves. In the head region, you have high flow. So there's a chance of the position by impaction when particles are large and the position by diffusion when particles are less than one micron or nano-sized particle. The fraction that escapes the position in the upper respiratory tract is called the respirable fraction. That fraction enters the lower respiratory tract. 
the first they enter the TB or tracheobronchial region. Here you have high flow at the, uh, at the start, but the flow starts to slow down. So you get impaction deposition in the upper airways of the TB region, but then for smaller size particles, you get also get diffusion, particularly in the deeper airway. And after going through the TB region, particularly the pulmonary region, where the airflow is pretty much uh, still, there's very little airflow. Most of the process are by diffusion or very low, slow, very, very slow flow. So here, there's no more impact. It's the position mainly by sedimentation for large particles and diffusion. That's inhalation. At the end of inhalation, you have pause. So then you will have additional deposition in all these regions during pause. And exhalation that we followed after while you get additional deposition in all the regions that uh, are separate models, models are developed for that. So this is actually the engine of MPPD. So if we, for, for it to be useful to people not uh, interested in the, in the perhaps uh, the modeling itself, but using as a tool, so we develop this space interface, the GUI, which goes on top and it has the menu-driven, allows the user to select parameters, such as airway morphology, particle properties, so forth, and calculate the position. And also, then it predicts results and saves them in data files or in graphic forms. All right. So this actually project was started about 20 years ago. It was a collaboration with Dutch Ministry of Health, and it was funded over the years by several government agencies, which I've listed here. MPPD is not unique in the other software similar to that. So here I wanted to compare MPPD versus the two major ones that already actually they, uh, uh, precede MPPD. One is NCRP. The other one is ICRP. Uh, NCR, I mean, I'm going to make a quick comparison in terms of the modeling. NCRP, ICRP are uh, semi-empirical, basically data fit to some function. But MPPD is mechanistic, meaning that it has physics, physiology, biology incorporated. So it's, in that sense, it's a step forward. In terms of species, uh, all three models have human, adults, and children. But MPPD has also uh, two, uh, several strains of uh, mice, rats, and other, other species. Lung geometry, NCRP, ICRP have semantic lung geometry, but MPPD has typical path semantic, five lobe semantic, and asymmetric, completely asymmetric geometry. Particles uh, for all three models are monodispersed or polydispersed. The breathing routes, it's pretty much nasal and oral for ICRP and NCRP, but MPPD has additional routes such as oral nasal, normal augmenter, and oral nasal mouth breather, and also endotracheal. In terms of clearance, uh, NCRP has uh, two, tw 22 compartments, 17 for the TB and five uh, for uh, lip node and the uh, away. ICRP has, has a three compartment uh, alve alveolar region, plus lymph nodes. And, and MPPD has TB clearance models for the TB uh, region and uh, for the alveolar region. It has an ICR, ICRP type attached to each terminal bronchial. Let's say, so if you have, like, say, 50,000 terminal bronchials, you would have 50,000 alveolar clearance uh, compartments attached to it. And I guess the, one of the major uh, uh, strengths of MPPD is this interface. NCRP has to be programmed. There are DOS are window menu driven for ICRP, but MPPD has a graphic user interface with health menu tutorial that can, you know, the user can read quickly and get up to speed and run the model. Well, so what are the key features of MPPD? Uh, it uh, calculates various dose metrics. Uh, in human uh, adults, it uh, calculates the dose in symmetric and asymmetric geometry. In children, it calculates the deposit the position for different ages, and it calculates dose in rats, two strains of rats, and in mice for calculates the position in uh, B6 and bowel stick. And we have uh, the position in rhesus monkey, guinea pigs, pigs, sheep, dogs, and rabbits. Some of these species uh, 
we, the model has been developed, but we are in the process of implementing them in NPPD. So what are the inputs to NPPD? Exposure characteristics, uh, such as mass, number, concentration, particle characteristics, such as diameter, size distribution, <coughs> breathing parameters, such as breathing frequency, total volume, breathing route, which are nasal, oral, oral nasal, and endotracheal. And then we have lung parameters, FRC, head volume, and we adjust for inhalability, which I mentioned earlier. So the output, it could be textual in output files, which has input parameters and predictions, or it can be plotted, can be graphical, per generation, load, and region. It also creates data for us that the user can export, can export to other applications, uh, in such as you know, graphic package and switches. So the, I have here put down the, the, uh, the link to the latest version of MPPD, which is version 3.04. So what does it predict? It predicts the position, dose, and calculates dose metric. The position calculates for the entire respiratory tract, for regional URT, which is head volume, T, uh, TB and alveolar. And it can predict by generation, uh, which is trachea, bronchial, all the way down to bronchial and alveolar. It is, and it has low bar deposition, like here I have put down for the human, uh, right upper, right middle, right lower, and so forth. And it also, for asymmetric geometry, predicts airway specific deposition. For retained dose, it calculates uh, per airway per generation for the TB and for regional for pulmonary region. So various dosmetric for extrapolation are deposition fraction, deposited mass, deposited mass rate, deposited mass rate per surface area, and deposited mass flux and retained mass. So uh, let me give you some examples of what type of outputs you uh, generate. One, since it's able to predict the position in every airway, it can give you distribution of the position in the respiratory tract. Here, an example is uh, two nanometer, you say uniform distribution, and you use five nanometer less uniform, and then as the part of the size becomes larger, it becomes heterogeneous. Uh, it can also predict the position as a function of the particle size uh, diameter. Here you have TB and pulmonary, and since it, uh, uh, we have a number of uh, asymmetric stochastic geometry, you can plot it for all these geometries and to give you a range rather than just a single line. So this way you can account for variation in the population as well. Uh, it can also do the same in the low bar, uh, for low bar deposition, which I won't go into detail due to interest of time. And it can give you deposition by per generation. Here you have, for different sizes, deposition from generation 0 to 23, and generation based determines with long depth. So at the given depth, how much deposition you have. So what are the applications of uh, MPPD? Uh, first application foremost in risk assessment establishes exposure dose response relationship. It improves interspecies dose metric adjustment and extrapolation. You uh, do, extrap do studies like in humans, in animals, and you want to extrapolate to humans. Basically, you develop models for humans and animals, and then you extrapolate from animal to human by, by some dose metric. Also, it is a great tool for interfacing with PBPK models. Quite often, PBPK models uh, do not have a number or they cannot predict those deposition in the lung. So basically, they assume a number and try to optimize it. However, by putting a MPPD and connecting it with PBPK, you can reduce this uncertainty. It also aids in the design of inhalation studies. You know, before you start an inhalation study, which are very expensive, time consuming, you want to have an idea of what should be the dose the animal receives, and that depends what the exposure concentration should be. So if you run MPPD, it can give you that estimate of what the exposure concentration should be to, for, you, for the uh, experimentalists to set a low, medium, and high exposure level in their studies. And finally, it aids in design of talks on human clinical studies. There are other applications for MPPD, which in recent years, one is just drug delivery. The same mechanisms that prevent particles from deposition can be actually overcome. The same modeling can be used to target drugs to specific regions of the lung. And quite recently, 
uh, NPPD has been a, a, a very important tool to uh, predict the dose when exposed to CBRN, which is chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear uh, agents, and uh, be able to predict the, to basically protect uh, against the threat of exposure to these materials. Uh, so, in closing, just a few highlights. MPPD can be used to predict the position in the lungs of humans and several species. It predicts detained dose in humans and rats. It can make interspecies extrapolation based on various dose metrics. And it's really been used and recently for drug delivery. And but foremost, important to emphasize that it's a mechanistic model. That's what it sets it apart from many other models. So it has potential for extension to different types of parts. So that actually concludes my presentation. I've listed references here if people are interested in finding out more about the model itself, the theory behind it, and so forth. So that ends my presentation. Thank you.